Green Arrow, number six, written by Keith Giffen and Dan Jurgens, art by Ignacio Calero. We left off last issue with Ollie fighting a big toxic man named Midas. He manages to get the one up on him, but then Blood Rose, Midas's main squeeze, gets the drop on Ollie and has a gun pointed at his head. This issue picks up exactly there, and Oliver has literally no way out of it. She has he has no way to get around this gun pointed right at his temple. And basically Oliver's kind of provoking her into doing something. He keeps on like smart talking. And as Midas is starting to come to, Blood Rose just shoots him straight up in the side of the head. And we see blood and we see him fall and everybody gasps. But then... Midas points out, oh, you didn't shoot to kill him, just wound him. And I don't know if they know how guns against temples work, but that's not, no. Regardless, Blood Rose is like, oh, I don't want, I don't want the superhero community coming out to like, coming after us because we killed one of their own. So I will only wound him for now. Uh, but my dearest, why did you come for me? And, you know, it's just the whole thing of, oh, they, they, they care about each other and they're doing these things out of revenge or whatever and blah, 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 blah. So then we see, of course, Ollie didn't actually die because they straight up told us that and he's back getting some medical attention from his friends and they let they basically ask whether or not he's a part of the superhero community and he's like, not really, though I did kind of talk to Aquaman once, if that counts. Um, and then it was revealed that Oliver, like, again, he didn't have a plan for that. He was just kind of going with it. But he logics that, like, nine times out of ten, once they start talking a lot, which she was doing, they don't actually want to kill you. They're just trying to waste some time. Which leaves the point that one out of ten times, that's not the case. But he doesn't want to think about that. Regardless, uh, the one assistant says how the scanners that are inside their goggles pointed out that Blood Rose doesn't come up with any sort of human humanity like traits at all and they reason it out that she's some sort of android or robot or whatever so they're able to track her energy signature that they picked up during the fight so Oliver gets geared back up and we cut over to Midas and Blood Rose who are basically just talking about how they need to buy their time a little bit because of Midas's rash attack on uh, Green Arrow so then we get this real quick glimpse to what I think is Blood Rose's background, where he may have been like a girlfriend to Oliver Queen at one point, but now he doesn't even remember her, I think. I don't know. Regardless, the container that they're in down by the dock it, like explodes. Green Arrow standing outside and it's just like, hey guys, we tracked your energy signature, so I'm here to take you guys out for good. And welcome to the extended fight scene. Oliver fires like a goop arrow to take care of Midas so he doesn't get involved in the fight real quick. Yeah, it's arrows versus guns between Blood Rose and uh, Ollie. He fires off an electric arrow, which is he's trying to short circuit her. That causes Midas to be able to break out of his goop. He squeezes uh, Green Arrow as hard as he can. And then Oliver puts some sort of special acid thing inside of his leg like inside of Midas's leg I don't know the way they're wording it is two words uh personal hygiene which maybe it's like actually just soap regardless apparently the assistants were had like a side bet off of that and they were happy to see that it worked so they realize okay he's getting dangerous we need to take out the archer for real Oliver Queen can wait and then an arrow comes down. Blood Rose dives on top of it so it doesn't get on to uh, Midas. We see him standing on top of a shipping standard. And he's like, if you surrender now, it'll stop because I got plenty more where that comes from. And then she just leaps in the air, starts firing off shots. And we see that she walked right into Green Arrow's trap of just this massive fiery explosion that just completely disintegrates her. Um, Midas... Goes walking around, starts smashing things, trying to find Green Arrow. And he steps up behind him and is just like, Hey, I got the skull of your girlfriend here. 
And he's like, all right, well, this fight is over. I'm, I'm done. I'm out. And he's like, oh, no, I'll be your judge of that. And he's like, no, no, you're not. And he sets off a self-destruct thing for their lair. So Oliver hightails it out of there. He got the dramatic dive in front of the explosion. And the, the people behind the chair are like, what was that? What was going on there? He's like, I don't know, some sort of love story. Whatever. Seems like it's over. So Oliver goes up to a rooftop, and he, he signs off with his guys. And he's like, well, that was a strange adventure, but I'm glad I made it through it. And he cracks open a beer on top of the roof, and we see that somebody is watching him through some futuristic binoculars. And they're like, oh, this, this guy, he's absolutely perfect. And he's so cool. So that's something that we're going to lead forward to. And then an epilogue where we see that same exact doc. Like, they didn't even move. Uh, Midas is stitching together Blood Rose again. And she's just a jumbled mess of robotic parts. I can barely spit out a word. And Midas just goes, I love you too, my Blood Rose. I love you too. And that's that. <sighs> this arc compared to the first one of, like, the internet celebrities, I appreciate far more. That being said, I still don't like this direction. Like... Green Arrow doesn't feel like he has a thing going on, you know? He just kind of... He's a superhero strictly for, like, three square blocks around his company's building is the way it feels like. Like, he doesn't have any sort of morality or any sort of personal credence right now. He's just like, oh, there's a bad guy doing bad things. And it's all very easily definable bad things. And I feel like Green Arrow, just from what I know of him outside of the New 52 could stand for a lot more than that. He could actually have principles. And I know going into a reboot, they can do whatever they want with him. But I just feel like there's nothing they're doing with him now. There is no, like, end game in sight for Green Arrow of, here's what we're building to. It's just like, hey, he's just kind of a douche. That's, <laughs> that's the gist of it. He's just, whether he's inside the costume or out, he's just kind of a dick. Overall, this issue, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6.5. I, I don't dislike inherently any of the plot things that they did this issue. The arc as a whole is a bit low, but better than the previous arc, so all that evens out to about a 6.5 art-wise. It's fine. It's not great in any way, but it's not terrible. It's just kind of house style and maybe a little bit weaker than that, but that's just my opinion on that. But hey, join us next month as we get into issue number 7, a.k.a. the start of the and the Senti run. 